How does integration of insulation, the curing process, and the precision of finishing and polishing precast concrete panels happen in a fully automated factory? Well, brace yourself as we take automation to its peak, ensuring maximum efficiency, unparalleled precision, and record-breaking output. Thank you. I'll follow you. So we're heading now to the end of the process. The part where we cannot walk because there's inside is the, the curing chamber. The okay. curing chamber where all the elements are being stored. Right, and how many chambers are there? Total there are more than 60 chambers inside, 60 pellets which can be placed inside. So the curing process is eight hours, roughly, depending on what the panel is, how thick, and, and all the dimensions. Depending on when the, the next process step is. Uh, it's really the question of when does the next element, second shelf, needs to be produced, okay. or when it needs to go onto the construction site. The eight hours is a rough guesstimate, but we guarantee uh, 20 kilonewtons on concrete strength before we demold and bring it to the construction site. 20 kilonewtons. 20 kilonewtons, yes. Perfect, all right, so what are we coming to? We see the machine are dropping down here. This is the last but not least station that we're doing. Here we have the demolding process. What we see here are eco slabs being yeah. taken off, taking off from the elements and being placed on stacks. Important is that the whole process, how we define or how we build our projects, actually is being able to be seen here. We don't want to pick up our elements more than it's uh, necessary. So actually the sequence that they are placed on site yeah. is just the uh, reverse that we are taking it out of the curing chamber and placing that on the stack. Right. So the elements are then placed on the stack and in this order they are placed in, uh, if there are slabs uh, next to each other or walls right. next to each other, just to make it efficiently and user friendly because during the handling process, a lot of things can go wrong, so just to reduce the possible error. And then this is where they come out and get ready to be shipped and palletized. Yes, well, it really depends on what kind of transport we are using. If we're using inloaders, if we're using regular trucks or long bed trucks, right. this really depends on the construction site. This really depends on the, the project. And then they are stacked differently and then they are transported to the construction site. Sure. Furthermore, what we give to the client or uh, add on is additional uh, rebars, we give them a mounting material, we give them propping bars. So we really try to make the life of our clients as easy as possible so that we really can use our elements as quickly as possible on site. The wall panels, floor panels, ceiling panels, whatever it is, comes out, everything's stored here, ready to ship, depending on the type of product it is and the trucks that's gonna be used. But not only that, you have pre-cut all of the rebar and connecting elements. Yes. So when you do the monolithic pour on site to tie everything together so it is monolithic, they don't have to search for anything, they don't no. have to bend anything. It's already labeled, ready to go. Even that can be placed onto the stack or with the transport and then uh, transport. So it goes with each section. Yes. Tell us how the panels are marked. Like how do they know what section is which when it gets to the job site? We have an overview layout and this overview layout is there are several notifications. We have a label sticking out of each element, a label with the QR code so that it's retraceable. And furthermore, each uh, stack, the worker marks it, marks the, the project number, the name of the project, and which uh, stack it is, the number of the stack. So that it's always retraceable what elements and where it is. Let's finish off again with this polishing machine behind us. And also let's talk about some of the custom stuff like decorative finishes, the mountains, you know, that, that you show on the wall. You know, the exterior of these can be done to a really high level or the interior. You got people in there chiseling like Marilyn Monroe and no, all this? No, 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 no. Uh, as you've seen be, uh, behind us, this is an industrialized construction method. Right. So we really want to have industrialized construction with a high output. So also the surface finishes needs to be at a certain level. So uh, one of the opportunities that we can see here is the grinding machine. The grinding machine has four or five different outputs from cores, from sandblasted to high quality polished which we will see right away. Let's walk over here and that's this machine. Now in there is a column, we talked about this a little bit earlier, but that can also polish the exterior walls to whatever finish they want. And that's a high gloss finish on this. This is a very, very high gloss finish. Yeah. And also this is colored concrete, so special concrete. And uh, in this project, there are, aside from the columns, which are at the edge of the project, yeah. there are walls in between 
I think they are in, uh, there are some walls which are with white concrete, yeah. uh, white cement and white concrete. This is r rather to give a difference uh, being done with a darker color, right. just to give it a view on the project. There's a lot of water being used and then obviously it's polishing and the material. Uh, you were talking to us a little bit about all of that is actually captured and recycled as well, or at least the majority of it. Yes, water used in here, uh, every drop is pumped back to a recycling machine so that we take out all the, the polishing grind. The polishing grind is separated and then reused in a recycler and the water is being reused again uh, overwards. This is really, really important for us just to uh, make also the production process as environmentally friendly as possible. So this is just one way that we're doing. In the back, and I have forgotten to tell you this at the beginning, there is this uh, chamber below there. So yeah. all the concrete waste, everything which uh, is not being used, is being transported uh, outside, being grind up, and then reused as gravel or uh, in another concrete production. So everything in the wall is recyclable. If it's not in the wall, if it gets on the ground, it's all captured and recycled. Uh, and reused. As good as possible. All of our elements can be separated, so the, the concrete uh, is separated from the uh, reinforcement and the plastics inside. We can reuse the individual components right. again for the next production. That's amazing. And where do we go from here? Shipping? I think uh, since uh, we don't have to go to the second line, we're just going to move over there and have a look at the insulated panels. I think that this is still something uh, which can be quite interesting for you guys. You show us which way to go and okay. I'll follow Let's go to the right over here. So what we have going on here, uh, everybody, is one of the things they do here and part of the culture is this is family day. So people that work here get to bring their families here so they can see what's really happening and there's a lot of people working super hard here all the time and I think it's good that you bring the family in so it becomes really a family environment. Yeah it is important you know that everybody's talking about what they're doing at work uh, but to really see and experience it's something right. different so yeah, yeah. in the summertime we have a couple of dates where every employee can bring his family and uh, right. we showcase them what they're doing there. You showcase them, you feed them, you, yeah. you get a little, you know, we're in wine country, yeah. a little bit of wine if they like it, so that's really cool. Yeah. All right, lead the way. Here is the end of the process, just before the molding. What we see here on the left are again the transport right. racks, which the inloader, uh, the, the blue the car, inloader, yeah. will go in, pick up the rack and drive the rack to the construction site and then come back again. This is a very, very efficient way to deliver the elements to the construction site. Right. What kind of elements, you can see it here. Uh, here is another element which is going to be polished okay. uh, later on uh, or the day after tomorrow. So this, this surface is going to be polished? This surface is going to be polished. Right. This is uh, with white uh, cement okay. and aggregates and, and the, the bottom bottom is not going to be polished. And then we have the insulation here. Then the insulation in, in here and when you see here on the bottom you see the uh, the glass fiber pins right. uh, and the structural reinforcement inside of the element. So again this space in here is going to get filled with concrete to yes. finish off that monolithic connection from and the whole building. building structure, yes. Yep. So walk me through the process on this insulation and getting installed. Everything is uh, happening uh, at the beginning of yep. this line over there. Here again the the mesh is being placed inside of the element, right. then the concrete is being poured. Then we have an automated uh, milling, a five axis milling machine, which actually cuts the uh, insulation boards uh, down to size. So uh, all the insulation boards are pre-cut, pre-numbered, right. and even the holes for the pins are being milled inside. We can have a look to this machine, yep. just to give you a quick impression of what is, uh, what is done over there and then they are manually placed inside of the pallet. Inside of the pallet? Uh, inside of the pallet on the fresh concrete, just to get traction within the concrete. Right. And when the concrete cures, you will not be able to get it off. It causes a bond. Yes. Then we have pin master, which drops the, the pins automatically right. inside, and then it moves into the curing chamber, and then it's married with the second layer that you see over there. So we've pretty much covered the entire process of the manufacturing of, of the panels with very little labor, as you saw in the in, in the video. Uh, six people basically running what's going yes, on. Yes, six people run the, the factory on the other side here. There are a little bit more. There are eight people because they're because of the complexity of the elements. There is a little bit more manual labor. 
One of the complexities is also the different types of insulation, also different color, yeah. coloring schemes. So this is XPS, this is polyurethane. Okay. It really depends on what the client wants, what kind of R value the, right. the client For the project requires, the what yeah. the region requires. Yeah. And so even a passive house can be realized with these elements, down to passive house standards. In Germany, the passive house standard is 0 0.15 in W, in uh, uh, the U value of the wall. Okay. And this can be realized with these elements yep. and special insulation and special thickness. All right, so the next step then, or part of the process that we're gonna take a look at is the milling machine. Yeah, after uh, the uh, preparation of the insulation boards. Yep. Something that we can have a look over there, just to see how the insulation boards are pre-prepared, be then placed in the element. Well, why don't we head over there yeah, now then? Yeah, let's Perfect. go there. All right, Bernard, so what station are we at now? Currently, we are at the station uh, which prepares the insulation boards. Yeah. And we did put a lot of effort into developing this station. So we are actually putting it in a continuous strand uh, and just uh, taping it together so that we don't uh, get that much waste. We actually have lower than 2% uh, waste right. in, in this station. And the machine behind us is uh, cutting the boards to size. Right and then drilling the holes, the holes for the pins, yeah. the connectors, and for the, the tubes, uh, the lifter tubes. And it's labeling, the, is that the project number? This is the project number or the element number, uh, element number 130, yeah. and this is the sixth piece they need to place. So even it's even labeled the first piece of uh, insulation that's starting from the left right. and then going to the right, one to whatever. And this number. gets then taken over and put in the wet concrete. This is put in the wet concrete, the pins are pushed through, the um, mesh is put on top, and then it goes into the curing chamber. Now I have an insulated wall panel with a thermal break. Insulated wall panel without a thermal break, which is metal smooth on both sides, and you can have mounting parts on both sides, everything you want. Right, right. Love it, love it. So, I mean, that's really it. That's the whole process then. This is the, in very short and very quickly, the whole process. I think in more detail, it would take longer, and but it's just to give you a right. quick impression of what we're doing here, what we're doing here in Italy, or what we're doing, all the Greenco clients yeah. uh, are doing everywhere in Europe. So are we gonna be able to see a job site? Yes, we're going to move to a job site, but since it's quite late already today, yeah. uh, we're going to move to the job site tomorrow, and then we have a look at the job site and see what they're doing over there, okay? Awesome, so there you have it, everybody. That is the uh, Progress Group factory, fully automated, concrete wall, panel, MEP, I mean, you name it, insulation, uh, processing system that you're selling all over the world and partnering with people, I should say, all over the world. Yes. And they're manufacturing, you have all the technology end to end. And when I say end to end, we're gonna see it happening on job site. Thanks so much, Bernard. Okay. Very good. Thank Thanks everybody for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.